Recording in progress. That is a California quail. Today I'm thinking of quails because of the Old Testament lesson that we heard today. In the Old Testament lesson that we hear today, we hear about how God will send to the starving Israelites in the desert flesh and bread. And that flesh came in the form of quails that were blown in from the, the ocean side into the desert or maybe the goal, I'm not sure. So you have seen the movie, some of you, The Ten Commandments by Cecil de, yes, B. DeMille. And I'm thinking of this one scene in the movie where they're complaining against Moses and Aaron, and they're like, have you brought us out to Egypt just to watch us die? Oh, those flesh pots and the onions and you know, the bread, and we just, we, we want to go back, right? And, and so Moses prays to God, oh my God, these people you've sent me, they're going to kill me. And God says, don't worry, I'll send them some flesh and some bread. And, and it'll come in the form of quails and manna, and you'll be okay. So in the movie, when the quails come in, the wind's blowing and the quails are coming in, and it's such a strange scene because they're catching the quails like they're catching baseballs, you know, and they're just kind of <laughs> catching them. And then there'll be a close-up on their face, and they'll just look like mad with starvation, like they're so hungry, and they're clutching the quails. And even though you don't see how they eat them, you kind of imagine off screen, <laughs> off screen that they're like, <laughs> and it's like, you know, and it's all bloody, and so like you kind of, because you don't, they're, they look crazed, right? And so it's pretty icky. <laughs> and that's how the people in the crowd are reacting today when they hear about Jesus, right? So we're in the fifth week of this whole Bread of Life, chapter six, right? The final week. Right, and in this final, so up to this point, we've really focused on the bread, right? The bread of life, the bread of heaven, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes we'll talk about the water, right? The living water. But we know that in chapter six, it's more than bread and water, right? right? But it began with the scene of the multiplication of loaves and what? Fish, right? So there was this, the flesh of the fish. And when we uh, think about this Exodus, Exodus story, we often think of the manna, right? Who thinks about the quail, right? So there's this flesh component that is there, but it gets kind of lost when we focus on the bread and the water. And that's because those are kind of easy. They're not like bloody and kind of disgusting, right? But today, Jesus, like, he, where did the flesh come from? Where did this drink my blood come from? Right? And he's saying this in this Bread of Life, chapter 6, and it takes the crowd uh, to a whole nother level that they were not ready for. He raises the ick factor, right? He's like, unless you eat my flesh, and drink my blood, they're like, wait, 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 you were talking about bread and living water, and now you're like, eat my flesh and drink my blood? Imagine a bunch of kosher Jews <laughs> hearing this, right? Like, they, like kosher eating, you know, if you slay an animal, you have to drain all the blood so that none of it hits your mouth. And he's like, you gotta drink my blood. Okay. So it's actually ickier than you think. 
uh, because up to this point when Jesus talks about eating bread, he's using the word to eat that is like eating a meal, dining, right? And English doesn't really have two words, although we kind of do, uh, that the eating that you eat as a person and you, the eating that an animal eats, right? But in a lot of languages, there are two words, uh, a word that you use to eat as eating as a person and what an animal does when they eat. And we kind of have that distinction in English when you say, I feed the dog, right, and I eat dinner, right? That there is that subtlety in there, but in other languages, it's much more distinct. Like you wouldn't interchange those feed and eat, which we kind of do. Right, don't eat like a pig, right, that kind of thing. So in, uh, in Greek, though, the ancient Greek, the, the words to eat, there are two words at least, uh, but the words, the two words used here, up in all of chapter six, up to today, or last week, we also read part of this, Jesus changes the word from eating as in dining to eating like an animal. Okay, so before it was eat the bread, eat the fish, right? And today it's more like devour or feed on. Feed on my flesh, drink my blood. So it's even more gross than how it sounds, right? And he's saying, I want you to eat my flesh and drink my blood like an animal, right? Like the Israelites with their quail that they're catching and they're just starving. They're starving. They don't have time to put it into a flesh pot, right? They are so hungry. This language is so scandalizing that not only do the, does the crowd reject it, do his disciples decide to leave, some of them, but even biblical scholars look at this and say, oh, come on, this can't be original to the Gospel of John. It must have been inserted later. For what reason, right? So the, the disciples outside of the 12 are so scandalized. And that's the word in Greek. They're so scandalized by this terribly disgusting image of gnawing and devouring his flesh and gulping down his blood or lapping it up like an animal. They say, this is such a difficult teaching. It's preposterous. Who can accept it? And they, all, uh, they turn around and they go back to their own life. Old life, it says. They go back to their old life. And they do, no, they do not walk with him any longer. See, the, this group who had eaten the multiplied bread and the multiplied fish, they were fine with that. Right? They were fine because they were used to, as I had talked about, with bread and circus. As you may recall, bread and circus was what the emperors did to mollify crowds. And they would dole out the bread and then give them a circus. And a circus wasn't clowns or juggling. It was Circus Maximus, where the gladiators killed them, each other. So entertain them with violence give them free bread, and they won't push back on the policies of the empire. So they were used to that. Jesus gave them a little bread in circus. At least that's how they understood it, right? He multiplied bread. Who can do that? That's pretty amazing, very entertaining. They got to eat. They were full. It was great. But then they started talking with Jesus, and Jesus is saying something like, I'm not actually here to like, entertain you or start a soup kitchen. I want you to think about what I've just done. I want you to think about what it means. What it means. This is a sign, as I have talked about. 
in John, we talk about signs, not miracles, because signs point away from themselves. Whereas miracles, we usually think of a miracle like, how did it happen? It's so amazing. Can it happen, right? A sign is like, it's not about what happens, how it happened. A sign is like, who is this? Who is this that's doing this? And Jesus says, I am. I am the bread of life. I want you to move away from concrete bread to who it is who has performed this and why. I have come to give you life. Not just what bread can give, because as your ancestors ate that manna, you know what happened, they all died. But the bread which I give to you is abundant life. I am the bread of heaven. And it's completely lost. They're just like, what? You're, how can you be like the bread? And he says, this bread is not like that bread that disappears when you consume and it's gone. I am the bread. That means have a relationship with me. Be in relationship with me. In the Gospel of John, belief it's not in the head. It's not an abstract concept. Belief is about being in relationship. He's saying, when he says, believe in me, he says, have a relationship with me. Be an intimate, loving relationship with me. And this is the bread. This is the bread that gives eternal life. Because it is, its very source is from God, and it never ends. And so your very life, when you are in relationship with me, though you die, you live forever. And this was very confusing. It's still hard for us today to have present tense eternal life because, you know, as that uh, theologian Teilhard de Chardin once said, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Our first primary identity is that we are yoked to the eternal. And we forget that we are actual eternal beings given a human experience because we completely identify with our basic needs on that Maslow triangle, right? Like, I'm a bread-eating person. But Jesus is saying, you are a God-needing person. You need God so much like you need bread in that deep, primal desire. Do you feel it? Do you feel your hunger for God like you hunger for bread? And Jesus is trying to reawaken them to what they already are. And he is trying to convince them, and they are still pushing back. And then Jesus take it, takes it up a notch, right? He says, OK, forget about the bread. I am the flesh. Drink my blood. Eat my flesh. Was that effective? <laughs> It, it really just it offended. In, in, uh, in Greek, it, it scandalized them. Scandalized them. Are you scandalized by your aching need for God? Like, it's such an aching, deep, primal desire that it's almost a little too intimate, too vulnerable to acknowledge that aching need, that hunger, that you are moving toward God and with ravenous desire, and you just want to consume whatever God gives you. You know, we Episcopalians, <laughs> we're so proper. Right? We're so decent. Like, I mean, look at how hard the altar guild works to keep this fair linen white. You know, and when there's a little drop of wine, 
You know, like I gotta get that out and gotta make sure the silver is all polished. And, and those are beautiful things. And we're gonna bless some corporals today. And those are beautiful things, but they are not for their own sake. All of this points, this meal that is here doesn't point to the meal that is only here. It points to the abundant giving of God's very self for you that can be accessed at all times. That's what a sacrament does. It doesn't point back to itself. It points to the reality that God is offering God's very self for your consumption whenever you desire it. And do you, the question today that he asked the crowd is, do you hunger for God like you hunger for bread? So, what do you think? Is it, it's a very vulnerable thing to have that kind of desire. But that is what's being offered, that abundance. And God and Jesus are saying, consume this abundant life I give you. Consume this love that I give you. Don't feel like you have to be measured and proper and perform an outward thing. Come to me with all your hunger and you will be satisfied. All the love, all the grace is here for you. Come and get it. Amen.